Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, right? We're going to talk about watermarking images here in Lightroom. We're going to pretty much try to cover the ins and outs of it, including hopping over to Photoshop to create a custom graphic watermark, kind of a very intrusive big X with like your logo in the middle kind of watermark, uh, but it'll be fun. It'll be cool. I think we'll learn a thing or two. If you do enjoy this video, well, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another photography or Lightroom or even Photoshop related tutorial in the future, of course. Uh, and if you really love this tutorial or maybe you don't believe me with just this tutorial, but any one of the other hundreds of tutorials on the channel, if you go and check them out, if you enjoy any of them, use the link up there and pick up a copy of my course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I think you'll really like it. I think you'll learn a thing or two from it. And it's a great way to support what we're doing here and allow me to continue making these videos in the future. Let's talk about watermarks in Lightroom. So first and foremost, you can get to your watermarks up under here, Lightroom, edit watermarks on a Windows machine. This would be edit. Uh, edit, edit watermarks. So it'll be here under the edit menu. Lightroom, edit watermarks. When we do this, uh, well, number one, whatever selected image we have, it's going to show us a watermark, as you can see here, above that selected image. And we can change this watermark. We're just using any old watermark here. Uh, I could change this and say, look, uh, Nathaniel Dodson. And we could say hyphen tutvid.com or whatever we wanted the watermark to be, right? You probably, you know, web addresses may be a little janky to put in a watermark. We go with like Nathaniel Dodson. And we could go uh, with the copyright sign, which, by the way, for the Mac is is alt or I'm sorry it's option G for the PC is alt and on the, your number pad it's alt hold down the alt key and hit 0169 and then let go of the alt key and you will get the little copyright to show up maybe I'll put the copyright at the beginning of the letters or the, the the watermark something like that copyright Nathaniel Dodson and you can you got all kinds of stuff to play with here different fonts different styles alignment uh, you could throw a drop shadow underneath it I'm not the biggest fan of a drop shadow on a watermark I'm gonna shut that off I think it kind of looks cheap uh, you can change the opacity of the watermark which which is probably a nice thing to do. You don't really want the watermark to be like in your face. Down here, sizing is interesting. You could go with fit, which will fit it across your image. Eh, maybe not the best look. If you change your anchor point to the very center, maybe that's what you'd want. Just have the watermark boom right across the middle. Really make sure nobody's going to take your image, right? Something like that. If you're working with highly, I don't know, highly confidential stuff or stuff that people absolutely cannot be taking and posting on Facebook, something like that, just to make sure they get the point that, hey, you're not going to crop this watermark out. Uh, you can go with fill, which tends to just do all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, just, you know, I don't know. I never use fill. I don't think I ever have. Proportional is interesting, though. I kind of dig proportional. The cool thing about proportional, and by the way, let's, we'll, we'll adjust the size in a moment. I want to talk about anchor. You can anchor the copyright to any corner or middle area of your photo. So like we could go top corner. I'm going to go with the bottom left hand corner for now and just going to anchor it right there. And now we can go back to proportional size. The nice thing about proportional size is it's going to be proportional to uh, the size of your image. So maybe work with some huge resolution images and some tiny resolution images. This will ensure that your watermark is always about that big with relation to the rest of your image. It's a really, really nice feature to have here in your watermark editor. And also we have rotation options. So sometimes I like to just throw my watermark uh, up against the side wall like that. And when you do that, maybe you want to change the inset. You, know, you want to boost it vertically a little bit, maybe even boost it horizontally just a little bit like that to get it off the very edge of the photo. And uh, my Mac is letting me know that my trackpad batteries are low. Thank you. <laughs> Let's continue on with the tutorial. See guys, stuff happens. Uh, and, and with this particular watermark here, I think I will just, the, the opacity really would have to be reduced a little bit more. Something like that. Now you can check out the photo and the watermark's not super distracting, in which case you can then save the, wa save the watermark as, you know, I don't know, uh, watermark 01 or something, whatever. Create that and we're going to have that as an option when we go to watermark our photos. Let's jump back up here to the edit watermarks dialog box, Lightroom, edit watermarks, of course, and uh, we'll talk about using a graphic. Now, I should just make a quick side note. I did kind of throw some shade, no pun intended, on the shadows before. Adding a shadow can help to a watermark, especially if you don't, because you don't always know like the color and the tone and you know, you could have an image with a white background, in which case a white watermark, even if it's set to an opacity of like 30%, still not going to be visible. So you might want to throw a shadow there if you're doing that kind of shooting a lot and you know you're shooting that way. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Like I said, just purely aesthetically, not practically speaking, I really don't like the shadow on a watermark. But then again, aesthetically speaking, I don't like a watermark, period. Now we have an option up here to choose a PNG or JPEG image or just hit the graphic icon and it's going to launch your browser finder window. I have not created that graphic, however. So let's jump over to Photoshop and create a graphic. 
Over here in Photoshop, I have a document. This is a 9,000 by 6,000 pixels. In fact, I'll just close it and we'll start with a new document. File, new, and we're gonna go 9,000 by 6,000. So we're gonna go 9,000 by 6,000. And this is a perfect two to three ratio image. I'm going with a resolution of 300, it's big. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. Now what we can do, we'll set our background uh, to the color black. So I'm just gonna straight up hit the command uh, or the hotkey command I, that'd be control I on the PC. And we're going to grab our rectangle tool shape creator or shape tool. And here I'm gonna use, I wanna make sure I'm drawing a shape. I wanna set the fill to white. So I'm just here for my color picker, I'm gonna choose a true white, go ahead and hit okay. The stroke, I'm going to say no stroke at all. So so just white and a stroke, or no stroke, excuse me. And then I'm gonna drag a white bar across my document just like that, right? So I got just a solid white bar across my document. Now what I'm gonna do is go edit, free transform path, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. I'm gonna make the path a bit longer. So I'm just gonna, you know, nudge it or drag it all the way over like that. So it's really, really long. And I'm gonna commit that change. Next, what I need to do is align this to the very center of my document. So I'm gonna do that by going select, all, and I have this rectangle layer selected. I'm gonna grab my move tool. It's this little cross arrow up there, and I'm gonna align it to the horizontal and vertical centers of my document, and then go select, deselect. At this point, I'm again gonna go edit, free transform. I'm gonna free transform that path, and I'm gonna just rotate this up so it's cutting through both the top and bottom corners of uh, my, what would be my image. I'm gonna commit that change. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, command or control J, and then I'm gonna go edit, free transform, and I'm gonna rotate this image in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna rotate this until it goes through the top and bottom corners just like that. And you can make it as perfect or not perfect as you like. It really doesn't matter all that that much. Now with these two layers, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select the bottom rectangle. So we've got both rectangles selected, right? Select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one. And I'm gonna hit command or control E to merge those shapes together. Now all I need to do is mask a center area out of the middle, but I want it to kind of look, um, I want it to look a little graceful for being an absurdly intrusive watermark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my elliptical marquee tool and I'm gonna start right in the very middle of my document, hold down my alter option key and drag out a perfect circle in the middle, just like that. And then I'm gonna go select, modify, feather, and I'm gonna feather this by, oh, I don't know, 150 pixels, something like that. And then with this rectangle shape layer selected, I'm going to go layer, layer mask, hide selection and it's gonna knock the middle of that area out and give it a little bit of a fade as well. After that, what I would do is drag my logo right into the middle. Now, I don't have a logo queued up to be dragged in, so I'm gonna grab the text tool and let's just create something that's, you know, your logo. Keep things kind of dumb, simple here. Open up my character panel. I'm gonna change the color of the text to white so we can actually see it. And uh, let's make it quite a bit larger here, maybe 150 points and I will drag this down to the middle of my document just like that. So your logo will be in the middle and you've got these little you know, X marks going across it. What we need to do now is reduce the opacity of this whole thing. So I'm gonna select my text layer, which is selected, hold down shift and select the rectangle layer and hit use the hockey command or control G to group those up. And this is our watermark, right? And I wanna reduce the opacity, but not too much. We'll just knock it down to like, I don't know, 40, something like that, right? That's good. We wanna get rid of the background layer because it's black and it's really in our way. But before we do that, we really, because we're working with a vector shape here, we need to merge this stuff together. Otherwise Lightroom or, or Photoshop exports it in a certain way and Lightroom could import it in a certain way. We just wanna make sure that everything's gonna work well. So we're basically gonna essentially flatten this image, but not yet. Uh, what we wanna do is select the watermark layer group, right click on it and just choose to merge the group. It's gonna turn that into like pixel artwork. And if we wanna go even further, just to make sure there's nothing hanging out around the edge of our document, right? With this watermark layer, you might say, nope, nothing's hanging out there. But if we go edit, uh, free transform, there is stuff out there that could be moved around and potentially misinterpreted. So we can just go like select, select all, and go image crop. It's gonna trim away anything that could be hanging out outside there, select, deselect. And now if we go back to edit free transform, you can see that just the stuff we can see, that's all that's in our image, great. We can grab our background here and drag it to the garbage or we can even, we can, you know, we can leave it because the way we're gonna export this, we're just gonna export this one single layer by right clicking on it and choose export as. I say leave the black background because it makes it a little easier to see our watermark if we ever decide we wanna go back in and tweak or adjust or make a new watermark. 
So here it is. It's very difficult to see because it's over a checkered transparent background, but this is important. You might see just solid white because you have the JPEG format chosen. You want to make sure you go with PNG and make sure that you have transparency checked on. Give it a second. It'll knock all the white away and just leave our artwork. In fact, we don't even see the black background because all we're doing is exporting this watermark layer. Go ahead and choose export all. It's just one layer though. We'll name it watermark.png. I'll save it on my desktop. If it's your company watermark, you probably want to save it in like a company assets folder or something like that. And then we'll go back over to Lightroom. Now here in Lightroom, once more, we're going to go Lightroom, edit watermarks. Now up here in edit watermarks, remember before I said I pretty much never use fit or fill. With text, I basically never use them. But with a watermark like this, it's exactly what you're going to want to use. So let's choose like fit. And here under image options, we can choose an image or we could just go with graphic, which is gonna launch your, your image picker. And there it is, watermark.png. Double click it and it's gonna bring it in. And you can see we now have this watermark that covers our entire image. By the way, if you just left sized at proportional, you're just gonna have your watermark down in the corner, which actually could be perfect if you just want your logo to be the watermark down in a corner or maybe smack dab in the middle of the image, something like that. I want it to be smack dab in the middle of the image, but I want it to fit to my image as well. And the reason that fit is important is because this, this logo will apply to any image, no matter the orientation or size. Uh, so we can just choose save to save this as a, you know, I don't know, overlay uh, X preset or something. I can just go, go ahead and hit create. And we could come over to like this photo of this girl. Now it's portrait orientation, not landscape orientation. Let's see what happens. Well, we can preview it, of course, by going Lightroom edit watermarks, and from our presets, we can choose overlay X, and we can see there's what we get. We get that right in the middle. Now, if we go with fill, you can see it's gonna be a bigger version of the logo, which maybe is what you're looking for, uh, but I, I think I kinda like fit a little bit better. We still get a nice X in there, um, and it works out uh, nicely. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose cancel to get out of that dialog box. Now that we've agonizingly and painstakingly created our watermarks, how do you apply a watermark to a photo in Lightroom? Well, as of right now, there's four different ways that I'm aware of that you can apply a watermark to your photo in Lightroom. Number one, you can apply a watermark when you're exporting an image. You right click on a photo, you choose export, you choose export from the export menu. And down here, you can choose watermarking. You can check on watermark and then choose the watermark you wish to place. Let's go with overlay X. And we're just saving this to our desktop. Great. In fact, let's resize this to, uh, yeah, to 2048 by 2048 on either the width or height. It's really going to be the width because that's the, the longer side here. And just choose export. It's going to export the photo. And we can jump right out to the desktop and preview the image. And there it is as a JPEG. You see 02 or 002.jpg with the watermark applied. So that's one way to apply a watermark. Another way that a watermark can be applied is when you're creating a slideshow. So here you can create a slideshow with one or multiple images. And over here in the overlays section of the right hand uh, panel is the option to watermark. So we could go small bottom or I could go, I could go with that overlay X watermark again. Uh, I could go with that. So which one did we do before? Watermark hyphen 01 is that we did. Yeah, there it is. And it's over there in the bottom corner, just like you would expect it. And if we go to like, you know, one of the other images, boom, same watermark there. We go to the portrait orientation. Uh, image, boom, the watermark is right there, and so on and so forth. So this, of course, you'd be exporting a slideshow, or you could export it as a PDF, and all of your images would have a watermark. Pretty nice. You can also apply a watermark when you're building a print layout. So we create a layout of images. Maybe we have multiple images here, and those images are on all these pages. Each image needs its own watermark, of course. So we scroll down here, and we have this option to include watermarking. Um, I could go with the overlay X watermark, and it's going to place the watermark on both the images like that. This is great. You know, you're, you're sending a contact sheet off to a client. You want to make it extremely clear, hey, these photos, don't take them and post them on Facebook, even if you can screenshot them. Sometimes it's difficult to get that point across. Uh, you could do something very intrusive like the overlay X, uh, or if you really trust the client, they're usually great. You could just slap a little watermark on there uh, and, you know, that it is what it is. And last but not least, here under the web option, which I don't really know many people that use the web gallery option, uh, but it is an option here in Adobe Lightroom. You have the option to add a watermark to your images here in the web gallery. Gallery. If we scroll down, you can see here in the output settings, we have the option to include a watermark as well. Overlay X is just so easy to see uh, here in the previews. You can even see it here in all these little images. Boom, 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 boom. They all have that overlay X 
watermark applied to them. So a lot of cool watermarking options for us here in Adobe Lightroom. I'm going to head back to the develop module here just so we can see our Central Park photo here. So that will pretty much do it for this tutorial. I know it's kind of a boring topic. It's watermarking, right? But if you want to know how to watermark your images and that's something that's important to you, it's kind of essential information, right? You need to get those images watermarked and hopefully watermarked beautifully uh, if, again, you do choose to watermark them. I'm not much of a watermark guy myself, but that's how it's done in Lightroom. Now, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, again, make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. And if you are really enjoyed the video and you're looking to support the channel and the content that we're creating here, please go ahead and pick up a copy of the course. It really helps out what we're doing here. Uh, and that course, by the way, it's all about how to retouch images and stuff like that in Photoshop. Not Lightroom, not yet. I'm working on a Lightroom course, but it's not quite ready yet for creating watermarks and more particularly creating and placing watermarks here in Adobe Lightroom using the edit watermarks dialog and so much more. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.